latest stage in the restoration of Western Hanger Castle has just been taking place with the renovation of the medieval barn behind me. It means that English Heritage can take the site off the at-risk list and it is now open to the public. Ted, I mean, what would his wealth be in today's terms, would you say? He would have been, when we talk about the kind of individuals who own football clubs, he's that kind of individual and that may say, sound trite because they didn't have football uh, teams as we know them in Elizabethan times, but he was a very wealthy man, um, you know, multi-millionaire. Would it have been fortified? I mean, would it have been a target for outlaws? Um, this, at the period we're talking about when he built this, the main castle here, it ceased really to be a fortification and it was very much more like a country house. But having said that, um, yes, he, he would have had people here permanently because he had more than one house, so he didn't live necessarily he didn't live here all the time. And he would have made sure that his barn was kept secure because all his wealth was in this one building. And it's been recently gone under some quite uh, renovation work. It's, it's just emerged from a massive scaffold and a freer program of work. Uh, English Heritage has uh, worked with the owners of the, who are the Forge family we've actually provided a half million pounds worth of public grant to make the works possible. If you'd have seen this building just two, three years ago, it had no tiles on its roof, the roof was collapsing, and there was a huge scaffold erected for its protection. Can we have a look at the roof inside? By all means. So can you tell us about the roof then? It's a very special construction, isn't it? It is. It's what, it's what we call a hammer beam roof, which refers to the large brackets that you can see against the walls. Now this is a very unusual form of roof on an agricultural building. We do find this kind of roof on higher status buildings. So you find them in the great halls of medieval palaces, you find them sometimes in the better quality churches. But to put it on an agricultural building is really quite unusual. And again we take from this that this man, he is not short of money and I think he is making a statement. And he decided that he wanted this form of roof reproduce the skills of so many years ago. We are exceptionally fortunate in that the family who now own this castle do come from a construction background and they have taught themselves the skills necessary to repair buildings such as this. And without that, no, all the money in the world would not actually repair a building unless there are the skills to, to actually come and do the work. And English Heritage is working with the rest of the sector to try and ensure that the skills that now rest with people who are coming to the end of their working lives and passed on to the next generation so that our work will continue well into the future. And is the barn going to be open to the public? The barn will be available as part of the, um, the tours that are possible to come and see the site. The public will have a right to come and uh, see how their money is being spent. In the summer months, the barn is open every Tuesday, so from April to September. Um, and it's also open uh, for special events and indeed, if you wish to, you can hire it and get married. China has occupied a prime place in the history of England for many centuries. It's been home to several illustrious families and in Tudor times it was a royal residence, the property of Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, both of whom came here. One of its more remarkable later owners, Thomas or Customer Smythe, was a notable Elizabethan who clashed on more than one occasion with the Virgin Queen herself. He was a substantially wealthy man of business who passed on his entrepreneurial skills to his dozen or more children, among whom was Sir Thomas Smythe, who had connections with the East India Company, the Muscovy Company, the Virginia Company of London, and funded the voyages of exploration of Henry Hudson and the settlements of Jamestown, Virginia. <laughs> My name is Alison Weir, I'm a historian and novelist and I'm just about to publish my 14th book. My main interest, area of interest is the British monarchy, the Tudors and the medieval period. So when you come to a place like this, does it bring the period that you're obviously so enthusiastic about to life? Oh yes it does and it's a huge privilege and I really mean that most sincerely to be asked to do these kind of things in these historic buildings. It gives me an enormous buzz. How do you research your characters in your time period? Oh, I look 
look at so many, a myriad historical sources, original source material, and then I read the secondary sources to see what other historians are thinking, but I don't always agree with them. Who's your, your favourite character from this period? I think it has to be Henry VIII. I mean, he's pretty charismatic. <laughs> Would you ever see yourself writing using this as a setting? Actually, I'm going to. I've written a novel on Eleanor of Aquitaine. They have Rosamond's Tower here, and Fair Rosamond was one of Henry II's mistresses. He was married to Eleanor of Aquitaine. I think I'm going to sneak Western Hanger into this text. And she was rich of the Lion Hearts mother, wasn't she? She was indeed, yes, that's right. Okay, thank you very much. Well. Thank you. Thank you.